Corey's engaged in his third voyage over the open ocean. I haven't given you the first one because, you know, there's lots of stuff here. He was exposed to the most imminent danger of death. When 14 days had summer and as many nights, his vessel sailed with full sail through a south wind in a straight course from land into the northern regions, his voyage seems to be beyond the limits of human wanderings and return to being possible. So the desert and the ocean is sought in a pathless sea that seems to have no end. Okay? A multitude of loathsome and annoying beasts, such as he had never seen before, covered the sea in swarms and struck the keel and the sides and the prow and the stern of the vessel so violently that it seemed they would penetrate the leather and covering of the ship. They were filled with fear and alarm, shedding copious tears. They prayed to God, who was a kind and ready helper of those who are in trouble. At that same hour, our holy Columba, although far away in body, was present in spirit with Cormac in the ship, and indeed, through the intercession of the saint, they are taken out of this peril. The peril is that the sea becomes solid with creatures. I think this is a classical motif, which you find uh, written about by ge Greek geographers, who uh, talk about the coagulated sea, the idea that when you get to the limit of the ocean, the sea becomes solid. Indeed, the sea and the sky seem to merge together. Some of these are accounts of pack ice, I suspect, such as were encountered, for example, by Pythias and Massilia, uh, the Greek voyager who went up there in the 300s BC. But it's also possibly that other imagery is creeping in here as well. Here, however, the peril is animate, not inanimate. And these are malevolent creatures. These are a manifestation of some form of evil. <coughs> the symbolism is very important here. The monks travel in a boat made of leather. Well, of course, monks do travel in boats made of leather in this period. We know they did. We know they made boats of leather. But let's not be under any illusions. The boat made of leather is also a highly potent theological symbol. We are all, of course, protected in our earthly existence by Christ. And because of that, if we get into a boat made of leather, which is a boat of mortality, dead hide, it doesn't really matter because that dead hide won't really affect us. In the same way as the Desert Fathers were known to have worn leather belts or even leather cloaks to have wrapped themselves in the hide of a dead animal, it is to emphasise that there is a mortality of the material, but an immortality uh, of the soul. So this is an image of very great importance. And indeed, there's a piece of Irish exegesis, one of the earliest commentaries on Mark, that talks about sailing on the Sea of Galilee, the stilling of the tempest, where the travellers are travelling in a boat made of hide. And the boat made of hide is the mortal flesh, but the framework that is made of wood is the strengthening effect of the rood, the symbol of Christ and the cross, holding the boat of leather into shape. And in some other stories of saints in the Celtic world, they go to sea in a boat that has a wooden frame but no leather covering. Because in a sense they don't need that. They travel protected anyway. But the idea that wrapping yourself in a boat of hide is putting yourself in a garment of a dead, a dead skin of mortality is a symbolism that is important here. Creatures try to penetrate, so I don't want to go there, there's all sorts of symbolism you can create out of that. But the craft is perilous, the creatures can sting and make a hole in that, but we don't need to be worried because the saint protects us, and also Christ through the saint protects, and that is therefore not a problem for the voyager. Okay? But there's a symbolism here, and it's, it's pursued through many texts.